Hi, I'm Jacob Stein, and I'm a partner at Allianz Los Angeles office and the global chair of Allianz Private Client Practice. Allianz is an international law firm, and in our private client practice, we work with individuals and families on their estate planning, tax planning, asset protection planning, and uh, international wealth transfer needs. Um, we work with both middle-class families who are just trying to hold on to what they have and some very wealthy individuals who are engaging in highly sophisticated planning. I've been practice, practicing for many years. I've published a lot, I speak a lot, and I'm here to share some of that experience with you. And in today's reel, we will talk um, about requirements uh, for a good asset protection planning trust. And there is a lot of confusion on this uh, topic on the internet because what you have sort of in general out there on the internet are a lot of companies and individuals who are pushing a particular product, right? They're trying to sell what they have. And because they're trying to sell what they have, they're trying to make, you know, that uh, uh, round object fit into a square hole. So um, what are the requirements of a good asset protection trust? And what do you see out there on the internet that may be good and not so good? Um, so a good asset protection trust must be irrevocable, meaning that the person who established the trust and transferred the assets of the trust cannot directly hold the power to take the assets back. That power can exist, can exist with another person, usually the trust protector, but never with the person who set up the trust. The trust should be for the benefit of a third party, children, family members, your pet poodle, whoever, but never the person who set up the trust. I do not believe in the so-called self-settled trusts that exist in the many U.S. jurisdictions. I think those trusts will fail in, if you're in bankruptcy. And the these types of trusts are also easier to attack uh, on uh, ultra ego grounds. So I always want a trust that is for the benefit of the third party, usually the kids. And we want to have the trust uh, to contain the spendthrift clause. And I think that's fairly standard nowadays. Uh, the spender clause. I think almost every trust now has it just automatically. And we want the trust to be discretionary. What discretionary means is that we are giving the trustee of the trust discretion when it comes to making distributions. The trustee gets to decide which beneficiary to distribute to, when to make the distribution, how much to distribute, and whether any distribution takes place at all. So if the trust may, if the trust meets those requirements, right? So it is irrevocable for the benefit of a third party, has a spendthrift clause, and it is discretionary. It is a good asset protection trust. It does not matter what the trust is called. There are so many people out there that are selling trusts with these clever names, you know, the Fortress Trust, the Bridge Trust, the Ultimate Asset Protection Trust, whatever. I'm kind of coming up with names here. Uh, many of them may be great asset protection trusts, but go beyond these uh, fancy names. <clears throat> Look at the substance of the trust. The trust does not need to have a fancy name. So long as it meets these four requirements, you will have a good asset protection trust. So a lot of the trusts that are commonly used in the state tax planning are good asset protection trusts. Just a simple irrevocable trust, so long as it's irrevocable, for the benefit of your kids, has a spendthrift clause, and the trustee is given discretion, is a great asset protection trust. You do not need more than that. You do not need to pay a ton of money for some sort of a branded name type of a trust that will not give you any extra benefit. I hope this was helpful. I'm Jacob Stein, and if you have any asset protection questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.